Yeah, great. Welcome everybody. Good morning. Good Friday morning uh, for to everyone. Thank you for joining us. This is um, our monthly Everyday Entrepreneur Series on Facebook Live. And today we have uh, the honor of talking to Abbott Stark, uh, the founder and one of the founders of OG, uh, a skincare product company. And uh, I've had the privilege of getting to know Abbott and working with Abbott for the past few years and thought it would be great um, for everyone to hear from Abbott and also hear about an industry that we don't get to hear about from a founder's point of view, which is the skincare industry. And so this is gonna be, a, I think, a really unique time and I hope that everybody enjoys it. Um, how are you doing, Abbott, this morning? I'm fine, thanks, Michael. It's great to be here. <laughs> Actually, um, I was just thinking how we originally met was through um, a competition. So. Uh, OG is a certified organic luxury skincare line. We have a third party independent uh, organic certification on all of our products and then we combine that with these highly effective, natural, clinically effective ingredients. So we use things like Edelweiss flower plant stem cells in our serum. They uh, have the power to reduce wrinkles in 22 days. It's actually a clinically tested ingredient. Wow. So just that natural scientific efficacy. Um, and we uh early on i think it was uh, a couple years ago now yeah. a few years ago now we were in the we um pitched og in the launch vt yep. business competition so it's this like statewide call for the best businesses in Ver in vermont to come <laughs> and best new businesses in vermont to come in and pitch um to a panel of expert investors so they had uh, not only venture capital investors there, but some of the leaders of the Vermont Venture Funds uh, were on the judging panel. And we, we actually went through a really great series of trainings. We were assigned a mentor, and so we met weekly in the lead up to the competition. And you, uh, through Reconcile It, so graciously sponsored yep. the event, and we're in the prize package. So when OG, you know, we were very, we were, we were, we were very privileged. We had a great mentor, and um, we ended up. It was James Macon. Um, he has a capital fund here in Vermont, and we ended up winning the first prize, which was thirty-five thousand dollars in cash prizes, and then forty thousand dollars in in-kind services. And uh, reconcile it was one of those in-kind services. I would say that. At the time, OG was still technically pre-launch, right? So we hadn't yet sold our products into the market, but we, um, uh, so our bookkeeping needs weren't as intense. We, but we had you into the office, and we were like, "Okay, Michael, <laughs> we're, we're going to use him as a bookkeeper." That's and, great. Yeah. Um, we ended up, thank goodness, we established that when we did because. We launched later that year and then our sales just took off and right. having the bookkeeping has just been beyond. I mean, it's so much more than bookkeeping for us. You've really been a, a trusted advisor on a lot of our financial issues. So. That's great. Well, that's great to We're hear. We're so thankful yeah, for that. And no. that's what the history yeah. behind how we no, met it's is awesome. so important. Yeah. And, and one of the major ingredients in your product actually hails from my home state, Arizona, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so right. yeah. Arizona, the providence of Arizona <laughs> for OG. And we, we have Michael and the jojoba seeds. So right. in all the OG <laughs> products, we use organic jojoba oil which is the one ingredient out there that's different than all the other oils, whether we're talking about argan, baobab, right. coconut, olive, almond, etc. Those are all triglyceride oils. They're kind of heavy on skin, a bit more occlusive blocking for some skin types. They can actually cause acne, mm. whereas jojoba is technically a liquid wax. So it actually biomimics the building block oils of skin. It's clinically proven non-comedogenic, meaning it will not clog pores, oh, wow. and it also uh, reduces wrinkles. So it's just like this amazing, Thanks. it's in all of our products, the yeah. organic home. Like oil. all things from Arizona, like we all... reduce wrinkles, Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and we're light on the skin. And so, no, I, that's, that's, that's really great. Well, what, what inspired you of all the industries you could have picked to do a startup in? What inspired you to choose the skincare industry? Because for those who know the skin industry, they're a very competitive industry, and there's a lot of dominant brands and players in it. So what gave you the courage and the inspiration to go and start a completely new brand in the skincare industry? Well, I would say that um, 
I really hailed from the skincare industry. So before OG, for 10 years, I was working behind the scenes for some of the world's biggest brands, oh, wow. formulating, designing, and then we were pr producing their products here in Vermont. We had a little a, a lab with about 250 people where we were actually making the designing and making the products. So um, I, as b my role in that company was to help um, come up with the new product concepts. Uh. We would brief, work with our lab on briefing them on formulations. They'd make a little formula at the bench and then we'd take that out to the global marketing teams of some of these global brands. Well. And in all that time, I actually got to travel around the world quite a bit, searching for the most effective ingredients and then just shopping in the most luxurious places, whether that be Barney's, Bergdorf Goodman, uh, Harrods, and Liberties of London. And with all the money that I had to spend on beauty products, and it was a lot, I was very, I was very privileged. We, I could not find products that aligned with my values around mm. organic, which at home we kept an organic kitchen, and so much of what we put onto our skin is absorbed into the body, that I really was trying to apply the same dis, uh, decisions and criteria for selecting beauty as I was for food. And I, I was looking for super clinically effective, high-end products that also met that organic and natural uh, ethos, and I could not find them out there. So we, with that white space, I said, let's start a beauty company. I met my co-founder, Mark Rice, who had come from uh, luxury fashion. Oh, great. Started the John Galliano brand um, in Paris and then grew that up until they sold to um, Louis Vuitton Moe Hennessy and Galliano became the principal designer for their flagship uh, line called Christian Dior. So it was a huge, uh, it was the, together we really brought that organic beauty and the luxury branding and that's that was the genesis of OG. That's really, really great. So, you know, if you guys heard that from Abbott, you were able to leverage your career experience, right, in the industry you were in, see an opportunity that wasn't there to meet your needs and on the way you met your co-founder exactly. and and so for those of you who are in a career right now who are thinking maybe I want you want to start a company or maybe you think at the time I'm not an entrepreneur well Abbott's sitting there in, in a career in the skincare industry meets his co-founder didn't plan on that and then you go and launch this new product and you have a co-founder ready and willing to work with you that's that's really really awesome um, tell us about your progress so far. You've launched a few years ago. Tell us the, kind of the progress of OG so far and, and where you guys are at today. Well, it's funny. We, you know, for, uh, for everything that you hear out there that says you shouldn't time the markets, with OG, I would say we very much time the market because when I met Mark, it was uh, 2010, and we exchanged some business plans, but uh, at the time we were still recovering from the economic crisis of 2008, and it just wasn't a great time to launch a new brand. So we said, let's put this on hold for a little while. I think we have, I have more to learn in my current role and uh, sort of irons in the fire that I'd like to see come to fruition. And uh, we, so, but then it was Christmas Eve, 2013. We called Mark and we said, let's start this business. And he came um, over, he was in Bali at the time. He came over and we, so I would say it was a nights and weekends project, a passion project at first. We were, um, working on the developing our name, uh, our deciding exactly our positioning in the market, um, and we used we tapped into a lot of great free resources that were available to us out there. We um, immediately started calling people that we knew in the industry and said, "Hey, we have this idea. We've put together a ten, you know, it was like a ten-page PowerPoint presentation." <laughs> And started showing that to folks. It was it was it was rough. It was a really <laughs> rough presentation when you look at it now. Like it was, um, but we used that to help develop our concept. We got feedback from them um, on on our plan, on the logistics, and uh, you know from there we actually started to get some investment money. And then with that, you know, we were able to really upgrade our graphics significantly. And every time we would show a new person our business plan, um, we were uh, able to get feedback, incorporate that feedback, and really upgrade the experience for the next person to see the presentation. And I, I always say, like, pitch, pitch everyone and pitch often. And that's that's your family, that's your friends. Just share with them what you're doing. And oftentimes, I'm, I want to whip, I want to bring out my iPhone and just say, look at this huge screen. We have these 
very powerful computers wow. in our pockets now right. that you can just show everybody, like right on the spot. You can just flip through a little PowerPoint PDF on your on your phone. And so I just keeping keeping the communication really open and out there about the brand was sort of how we really got it off the ground. Was that's that, really great. That, that was, I feel like that was the answer. Yeah, no, question. no, that's really, really great. Now, I've had the privilege of working closely with uh, one of your family members, your brother, yeah. Alex, yeah. who is also involved with the business. Uh, for those of, in our audience who are watching, who are thinking about going into business with a family member, maybe starting a company with a sibling um, or you know somebody in their family, what is some advice that you could give around starting a business, working um, a business with a family member? Yeah, I would say that um, it, I, in my in my previous life, I, I was working at a company that was actually owned by two brothers. Ah. So I, I I had seen their interactions, and I actually was a little, you know, I really, <laughs> you know, I enjoyed my my brother and I. We were very different growing up, but uh, you know, he was like sports and I was like Barbie <laughs> you know those were those were so uh, I, I was really you know it was and he you know today how that's evolved and how we operate in the company is that he is really operations logistics um, and this he's our chief operations officer actually and my role is really more on the product design side and the marketing and you know doing makeovers and makeup applications and so we're still able to pursue the areas of the business that are really that we're drawn to. Anyway, I had seen the brothers operate in the business, and I was envious of how the, how they uh, were able to do that and the time that they got to spend together. And they would have their parents come in and tour the business. And so today, like our parents will come and meet us oh, for lunch and great. come into the office. And you know, like Christmas time, our our dad was like he came in to help pack boxes last year we were just overwhelmed with orders during the holiday season so it was kind of, it was just like a, it's, <laughs> it's really nice and it's really sweet and i would say the other side of that is um you know every partnership whether it be um in business or in personal mm -hmm. life is going to break down in the you know it's going to come to an end and it's you know even if even if that is a natural end of, of death so how do we plan to handle that dissolution of the relationship at the outset. Oh. Um, and so with OG, we were very careful um, to uh, really to, 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 to discount our familiar relationship and just focus on the, like the, the nuts and bolts of our business relationship when we started the company. We did a lot of negotiation as a set of business partners to handle you know whatever eventualities may arise whether, that's great whether that be you know uh, uh, uh you know the whatever dissolution of the business changes of ownership changes in personal life status or you know even the worst case scenarios of death so we we laid all of that out contractually right um that's great so even as family even though you were family members even though you've grown up together you knew each other well you said we're business partners let's put this out on the table as a business venture and not let our familiar relationship interfere with that um, and, and treat it really as a business venture. Exactly. So that's really, that's really, really great. That's exactly. really great planning. Well, um, this has been great. I've, I've learned a lot. <laughs> even as a, even working with you, I've learned, I've learned a ton. Um, maybe two final questions. Yeah. Any advice for, uh, any good advice for uh, entrepreneurs who you know entrepreneurs work long hours they get they don't get a lot of sleep what's a basic practice to take care of their skin oh, to you take know care of their because skin. obviously entrepreneurs need to be um, presentable to investors to their customers to their vendors what's a basic advice for an entrepreneur who's just new to skin care and they need the basic kind of advice on taking care of their skin what would be what would be something you, you could give? A little nugget. Well, well it's, all, it's all a little cliche <laughs> yes. because I can, of course, direct you to OG, which I will do in a moment. <laughs> I'll say that, that I mean, to your point, uh, people's, people's bodies, our minds, our skin, we're going to do better if we are getting enough rest, mm -hmm. uh, if we're drinking enough water, not drinking too much coffee, and all of, the, you know, all of those things are, are – they can be challenging, yeah, as, an yeah. as you know, too, yeah. as an entrepreneur uh, with, a, with a growing company. I would say that, um, but it, it, to the extent that we can focus on those, keeping healthy, exercising, exercise, you, you'll just get um, all the benefits for the mind and body. So 
to the extent that you can do those basics, okay. I would say go for it. And then, of course, I would say moisturize. <laughs> right, moisturize, 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 moisturize. moisturize. Okay. And our, I mean, we have some great products for that, of course, at OG. Our Jojoba Restore Face Oil is that pure organic jojoba seed that I mentioned. Um, it, it, it supplements the natural oils of skin. It biomimics the building block oils of skin. So um, you can check that out on our website at OG.com. That's great. Uh, we just launched some new products there, our sculpted lip oil tints based on our sculpted lip oil. They're, you know, I, it seems like we're, we're like, are we really coming into the holiday season? But it's, uh, you know, we're, we are coming into You're the already holidays, launching for that. You're preparing school, for that. It's yeah. dry skin yeah. season. So That's it's a great. great time to, to shop OG. Okay, and then one final question is, for those in our audience watching that um, are thinking about starting their, their first business, what's uh, one piece of advice you, know, you can give to somebody that was like you in their career and had an idea um, and is wanting to start? What's kind of one piece of advice you could give them? One piece of advice that I would, that I would give to anybody new starting a company, um, just like we connected with you through the um, entrepreneurial ecosystem here, it's uh, it's really share your company and sometimes mm -hmm. I say pitch uh, pitch often mm -hmm. you know it's just um, pitch to everyone pitch often that's usually what I say no matter what your business is whether you have a service company and you're looking for customers you have a new brand and you mm -hmm. want to get the word out there about it you're raising investor financing it's all about just sharing that idea with folks and getting their feedback and just keeping the word out there so um, and it's, you know, talk, talking is, is free. <laughs> right. <laughs> so talking costs no money. Right? Talking costs no money. <laughs> so it's, I, I would just encourage people to really get their ideas out there right away. We've found that um, a lot of, uh, particularly a lot of women are slower to start their own businesses because they're just, it, just by, uh, you know, the, the trend is that they tend to be a little bit more uh, slow and methodical in mm. the development. They don't want to put something out there that isn't all the, you know, isn't 100% wow. complete. And I would say just push through that wall and, uh, you know, gals, get out there with your business plans and start sharing them with folks and tell people about it because we really need uh, more female entrepreneurs in the space. That's great. Awesome. That's great advice, Evan. Thank you so much. I've enjoyed this time. I hope you have too. Thank you for joining us and we'll hope to see you next month um, as we do another See, uh, another interview with a great entrepreneur. Thank you.